Hi there, and thank you for joining me here on my Painting Reborn Dolls video, and I am going over my details. This is where I go over my wrinkles, creases, and folds, and this is the part of reborn that takes the most time for me. Um, believe it or not, this is actually sped up, uh, I think, times two and uh, it usually takes me minimum per session, about two to three hours. And I usually take the most time. This is actually my most relaxing time as well. I'm using a Reborn Effects number no. four needle point brush, and I pick this up at uh, McPherson Crafts. I'll leave the link below. And it is the best brush I've ever used for fine details. Uh, I usually take like an old brush and I like snip off pieces of the hair to make it a fine point and this is such a comfortable brush to use uh, and it gets then it is what it is like it's a needle point brush that gets really deep into those creases and um, it's so comfortable it doesn't make my hand tired which sometimes when I'm working like this it is tiring on the hand because you have to be very, very steady. It fits between the um, phalanges, like between the fingers and even the, like the wrinkles on the knuckles. It's perfect. Uh, even like if you can see like right there where I'm shading uh, the fold of the foot inside there, it's really difficult to get the paint inside there without um, making it look sloppy. So this is actually a perfect brush to get the detail inside there and it's not flimsy where you know I would cut hairs off of uh, some brushes and you know like with one hair it'd be flimsy so you know it's it was very very difficult to you know get the paint in there without it kind of being messy so this brush is just designed perfectly and the person who designed this is an artist Shelly and uh, amazing she did such an amazing job on this so uh and i could see this being used like i am mixed i'm a mixed medium artist so i could see so many uses for this in my other like if i'm painting like in canvas or any other of my uh, work like my clay work and stuff so um yeah i'm instantly in love with this brush so i highly recommend it i'll leave a link again i'll leave a link below and again i picked this up at mcpherson crafts Another good brush to invest in that I've been picking up there, as I, you can see, is that a small uh, brush, and that is a doe foot mop brush. And it's a really small, soft, uh, it's almost like a mohair type brush. I'm not really sure what kind of hair it is made out of, but I highly recommend that as well because it's, it, um, what I'm not really rubbing any of the paint away. It's more pushing 
the paint because it is oil paint so when you push it into the creases it lets it set properly into it if that makes any sense um, you push the paint properly into the creases so it will um, make the creases stand out more and make the creases show the depth of it uh, I'm a strong believer in painting shadows so if you can imagine um, making the shadows look deeper and you push that paint the darker paint into the where you want it deeper that's what I do that's how I use the doe foot um, brush so um, when I'm when I'm adding the paint with the, uh, with the needle point I ensure that it's you know put where it's supposed to be with the doe foot I hope that makes sense and I kind of picturing in my head how it, it's being done but yeah, if you have any questions about what I'm trying to explain I hope that makes sense but that's what I use the uh, doe foot brush for In my uh, many years and hours of reborning, one thing that I highly recommend is you always check your work because after hours of looking at creases and wrinkles and fine lines, uh, your eyes will get wonky and um, you know, I highly recommend also that you have um, something, uh, I don't know, uh, either you're outside or you watch a television or have something visually stimulating to get your eyes away from your work that you can look at uh, take breaks often 
because your eyes will need a break and it's you know your eyes are your tools as well so make sure you take care of them um, I always watch I know you can see my mouse there I always have either Netflix on usually I watch the office or something on Netflix and I have it on and I have it playing so I can listen to it while I paint and then every once in a while I'll look up and I'll watch it just to give my eyes a break so that's really really important so make sure that you take as many breaks as you can and also force yourself to take a break so you can check your work Oh, and uh, I guess you're wondering, you may have been wondering, uh, the order on which like I crease and uh, blush because everybody has their own way. So I usually um, crease after all my blushing and my flesh tones are um, the way I want it. So um, the flesh tones are all done and the blushing is all done before I decide to do any of my creasing. And so the mottling is done the blushing, lip color, all that good stuff, uh, veining, all that is done before I even attempt to do the creasing because the creasing does take a lot of time and that's where a lot of the detail is. Um, there's still more layers that come after the creasing but those are more um, more like undertones and some touch-ups that you know if I want to even out some skin tone or add a little bit more detail but I usually finish up any blushings or any of the actual overall skin tones before I do any of the creasing. So that's usually how my process goes. So um, yeah, because I find that um, I don't like to uh, wash away any of the details because it takes that much time and um, there's uh, and I also don't want to, I don't want it to look too muddy. Like I don't also want to keep adding a whole bunch of the creasing uh, layers and then add the flesh colors over top of it because I find that over time when I used to, I used to do like layers, I do like uh, flesh tones and then I do creasing and then I do flesh tones again and then I do creasing and blushing and all that kind of stuff. When I do layers like that, I found that the colors would get really muddy and kind of uh, a little bit more messy. It, it didn't give the look that I really wanted it to. So that's why I um, usually leave the creasing um, a little bit towards the final touches. What a wonderful world.
colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. This part is where uh, this paintbrush really showed um, its true colors and how it helped me. Uh, it's as you can see, like there's lots of tiny little creases and corners with the way that this uh, hand is shaped and um, positioned. So getting into the deep, deep corners and inside the folds of the hand was so difficult. Like I, I took a moment before I even approached using this brush and I looked at all my other brushes to see if any of them would be able to get in there. And I would have to do it the old traditional way that I would with, which was grabbing a brush and a bunch of paint and sloshing it in there and then like taking away the paint uh, in order to ensure that there was paint in those little corners and creases and folds. So uh, yeah, it, uh, I uh, must say this uh, brush completely came through. So there it is, work at its magic. I'm telling you, this is the best. I love it so much. enjoyed my details video with my painting reborn dolls I will have some more videos coming up I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to message me or leave a comment I will have links below so make sure you check those out as well make sure you subscribe and click the notifications so you know when my next videos will be up I will be uploading daily so make sure you check the videos out thanks for watching and i'll see you soon bye